Hi guys. So there's been a request for me to make a short video about direct variation. Uh, this is both for the SL and the HL, you just do it at different times. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and share. You've done a little bit of direct variation before, but the direct variation that you always did before was all just straight linear stuff, right? The X and the Y were always linear relative to each other. All right, so what they want to introduce to you here is the fact that direct variation can actually mean that two variables are proportional that maybe aren't linear with respect to each other. All right, so I'm going to give you a couple of examples of that, and you can see that uh, here in, in just a couple of minutes. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, look specifically at direct variation. Okay, so the first thing I want you to think of is um, you already know some things that are direct variation. Uh, some of you are in physics. You should have done physics before. Uh, one of the things that you learned is that F equals MA. So what that means is that the force and the acceleration are directly proportional, right? Because there's this constant of proportion proportionality that as long as the mass stays the same, right? If you double the acceleration, that's going to double the force, okay? Uh, so that's, that's an example. Um, one that uh, you may be comfortable with as well is uh, kinetic energy right, which is equal to one half mv squared. So now in this case, the kinetic energy and the velocity squared are proportional. And so we could say that kinetic energy and velocity squared are directly proportional or that there is a direct variation relationship between the kinetic energy and the velocity squared, okay? Now what that means this time is that the one half m that is now my constant of proportionality, or I think in the textbook it uses an A. It doesn't really matter, it's just a constant, right? But now, if uh, V squared doubles, then that means the kinetic energy doubles. But that means that V doesn't have to double in order for ki kinetic energy to double, right? So it's, it's kind of, it, I guess it's important that you recognize that we're now making a direct variable relationship uh, between two things that maybe aren't linear variables. Uh, in physics, we call this process linearization, okay? Uh, you may have done something similar for those that are in chemistry. Bio, I know you guys don't do any math in there because it's not a real science class, so don't worry about it. Um, you'll, you'll get the idea now, but the hope is that we're gonna make some connections between what we're doing in science and what we're doing in, in math now, all right? The basic idea is that when we have direct variation, we're going to end up with something where it's y equals some constant of proportionality times x to some power, right? Now that power, and be careful because that power can be a, uh, a whole number, but it can also be a fraction, right? It could be a one half, meaning that, that it's a square root, okay? So uh, as long as we can create a linear relationship between y and some power of x, then we'll say that y and x to the n vary directly or that they're directly proportional, okay? Uh, just an example, I'll share with you the one that was in the textbook just because this is uh, a good example of, of what they mean when they're talking about this, right? They say the rate uh, of the spread of fungus on a petri dish, x, varies directly with the square of the perimeter of the area covered by the fungus, so P is the, the perimeter there, okay? And it says if the rate is two centimeters squared per second when the perimeter is 3.2, find the equation relating the rate of the spread to the perimeter, okay? So now what it's saying is that the rate of spread varies directly, so rate of spread, that's X, varies directly with the square of the perimeter, okay, which is P. So that's saying that x varies directly with the square of the perimeter. And that's what it's saying, all right? Now, if x is directly proportional to p squared, that means that x equals some constant, you can use a or k or c or whatever you feel like, okay, times p squared, okay? Now, the neat thing is, is that because there's really only one variable here, uh, sorry, one, uh, this is not a variable, this is a parameter. There's one parameter here. 
by knowing one situation where you have X and P, you can then solve for A, and that's exactly what they gave us. They gave us the rate being two centimeters per second. Okay, the rate was X, so that would be two. In physics, you'd be required to deal with the units as well to recognize that it's centimeters per second, which is equal to A times the perimeter, which is 3.2 squared. And then you'd have to be able to work with the units and all that kind of stuff and find out the units of A. Uh, in, in this situation, we're not super, super worried about that, though it's a good practice. You could go ahead and find that. So if we work it out, you should be able to get, uh, please try the math on your own, but you should get the A equals 0 0.195, okay? And yes, it does have units. Um, the units should be, uh, let's see, per second. See if you can get that, uh, but it's not absolutely necessary unless you're in physics. Um, okay, so uh, we've got A. So that's, um, that's part A, it wanted us to find an equation. So now we've got the x equals 0 0.195 times p squared. There's your equation. It has the varies directly. So this right here, proportional is the varies directly, which is the same thing as having equals a constant times that, all right? Uh, last of all, it wants us to find the perimeter when the rate is six. So we'll go ahead and put six in for the rate, which is x, so 6 equals 0 0.195 p squared, and that should then allow us to solve for p, which hopefully you get about 5.54 centimeters. Make sure that that works out. Please do do the calculation and see if you can make sure that you can do the rearrangement, or obviously this is a situation where you can use an insolve on your calculator, but make sure you can get that p. All right, so I hope that's helpful in understanding kind of the basic idea of what's going on here and, and what they're looking for when they say that something varies directly, or in other words, that it's directly proportional to, even if the two terms are not specifically linear. All right, uh, again, it can be any power. All right, good luck on your homework.